All right, today's video, we're gonna be cleaning the carburetor on this 1985 Suzuki 185. This video is probably applicable to the 125 four-wheeler as well as 125 three-wheeler and 185 three-wheeler. So first thing I'm gonna do is pull the seat off. So right under here, there's a lever. Pull that up. You can see down here, I'll show the cable routing. I did get this pretty clean with the power washer. So you're gonna to wanna to unscrew the top cap here to get your slide needle out. Your choke cable comes in right there. You've got a vent line here that needs to come off and then fuel in snakes under here. All that'll need to come off as well as always turn your fuel off on your petcock, which is right here. So I'm gonna get all this stuff pulled off, get the carburetor up on the bench and then do a step-by-step -step on how to disassemble. Okay, the old carburetor is off. There's something I wanted to point out though. This has the choke that comes in here that's controlled on the handlebar and then there's also a choke down here. So when you unscrew the cable choke out of here, you have to pull this out like that. You can see that little arm back and forth to get the cable out. Just, just wanted to point that out because all right, we're ready to get to work here, but first I just wanted to go over some of the tools I have here and what you'll need to do this at home. So first I'll start from this side are just some bottle brushes. I have these in varying sizes. They're good for cleaning out in places like that. Um, I have some smaller ones too. A stainless steel wire brush. It's good to have a new one of these that way you're not carrying over any debris. A set of torch tip cleaners. These are very handy for cleaning jets. So, you know, they're in varying sizes. You can get this at Napa, uh, any welding store. They're cheap, they're good to have around. Also, a parts diagram. I'll link this in the description. Um, this is very important because it, it shows you what goes where and if you're missing something or if you can't figure out where an O-ring goes, this will tell you. Uh, I pulled this from Rocky Mountain ATV. Set of nitrile gloves. Uh, these are good to keep your skin protected when you're using cleaners. Standard screwdriver. A pair of small slip joint pliers. And a can of carburetor cleaner. You're probably going to use a whole one of these, so it's good to just start with a whole one. So we'll start here just looking once over, I'll, I'll start down here on the bowl. I believe this is a primer. I'm going to take this off first because it's connected to the bowl. If I would take the bowl off, it, it'd be harder. It's easier to hold it like this. So I'm going to take that off. I'm also going to take over, take out the uh, overflow screw down here, and then I'll take the bowl off. These usually come out Sometimes they come out easy, sometimes they don't. That's why I have these pliers handy. If someone put them in there really tight, you can grab a hold of it and turn it like this. That way you're not going to strip. Also, I set down a clean piece of cardboard here. I have my tools kind of close just because, but I always like setting this down that way I can put all my parts on here. And for myself, a nice cold ski. If you're from the Midwest, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, you know. All right, we'll take these out. can see there's some varnish in there already. I'll take the overflow screw out. Yeah, that's tight. Let's see if these pliers will get it. Okay, it's coming now. Yeah, you can see the varnish on this. This is why it's important. If you're not going to ride something for a while, drain the gas out. Take these bowl screws out. I have a couple of these loosened already if you see.
All right, now the bowl should come off. If not, just give it a couple. There we go. Nice. <clears throat> so you can see this is very, very varnished up. Nasty. Um, the float needle is free though, which is good. It, it just looks like there was some, some gas sitting in here. So overall, not, not terrible. Next, I'm going to take the choke out. So I'll try it with these pliers. Yep, it's coming out now too. Okay, you can see that's got a half moon on it or a, a semicircle. It just slides. You can see that in there. It has to go in that way. It won't go in any other way. It won't thread in. So, important, important note there. <clears throat> Take out the air fuel screw. I always screw these in to bottom out and count the rotations. That way I know when I put it back together where it needs to be. So we'll go in. There's a half, one. It's pretty sticky. I'll call it one and a half on that. So it's normally, the rule of thumb is usually two turns on pretty much everything, so. But we'll use the one and a half because that's what was on here. There's a spring on this and an O-ring. didn't come out yet. Let's see if we can. You can see the spring down in there. It's just not wanting to come out. I might have to take a seal pick and get that. Yeah, it's stuck in there. Okay. I'll have to get a seal pick out. So we'll take the main jet out now. So it's got a a flat through there to use a straight blade screwdriver but it's also a hex so it looks like maybe like an eight millimeter i'll just use these pliers uh, this stuff's not very tight so it should come right out or this stuff shouldn't be very tight okay yeah it's coming out Okay, there's also an O-ring on there, you can see. We'll slip that over here. Now I'll take out the pilot jet right there, straight blade screwdriver. Now we'll take out the float. So sometimes there's a flat on one side. Uh, this rod that goes through there is captured in the carburetor bowl though so it can't go out so it looks like this one this one will just come out either way so i'll just take the screwdriver and kind of push it out come over here with my finger grab it pull it <clears throat> set it over here now the float comes out with the float needle too so this this does the needle does not look bad at all on here surprisingly sometimes they're rubber tipped this one does not appear to be rubber tipped Okay, then I'll take out this little baffle here, and looks like this contains the needle seat. So the, the seat on this may be replaceable. Let's look at the drawing. Yeah, it looks like it comes out. So some of these come out, some of them don't. This one appears to come out. Okay, put that over there, take this baffle out. There's a seat retainer right there. Looks like a little shifting fork. And then the seat should come out if you want to. Yep, seat's out. Okay, so you can see this gasket's on here. I'm gonna try and save that. I didn't get a rebuild kit for this, so I'm just gonna clean everything up as good as I can. Uh, I think we'll be able to make it work. So I'm going to clean all this up, then I'll come back and we'll do reassembly.
<laughs> All right, I'm going to start by cleaning the carburetor bowl here. So I'm just going to take some carb cleaner and spray down in there. It doesn't have to be a lot. And just take this wire brush and kind of work it in there. So this will take some time, but just kind of, you also want to take like a straight blade screwdriver down in there and just kind of carve out some of that varnish, nasty stuff. So I'm going to get this cleaned up and then we'll move on to cleaning up the floats and needle. All right, I got the carburetor bowl all cleaned up. It came out really good. There was some stuff stuck down in there pretty good, but I think I got most of it out. Also, the uh, overflow screw, I got that cleaned up as well. And what I'm, what I'm doing is those hard to reach areas down there, I'm taking this precision screwdriver and just kind of working in there. And also what, what works well is this mean green. I like to spray out you know, spray it out in there and down the carburetor cleaner works well, but it kind of evaporates quickly. So that, this is, this is something good to use. So this stuff's all clean. I'm going to blow it all out with compressed air and then I'm going to start cleaning the actual body of the carburetor. So before I start cleaning this up, I did notice that there's a adjustment screw right here that I forgot to remove so i'm going to go ahead and remove that and if you look at the drawing here that i have linked it calls that out as item number 30. so item number 30 is a it's calling it a pilot screw and it's saying two and seven eighths so i would assume that that's the how far you turn it out from fully seated so i'm gonna i'm gonna check that before i remove it Let's see. One. One. One and a half. Two. Two and a half. Yep, it, it is two and seven eighths turns. I'll, I'll probably just do three. So, but we'll remove. Okay, there's also a spring in there too, so we'll see if we can get, yep, there it comes. And it looks like a washer too, so. All right, I'm gonna fish this washer out of here with this screwdriver. Here it comes, there it is. So usually when there's a spring like that, there's always a washer on the bottom. It goes together like that. Now we'll clean this. All right, so I got the body of the carburetor all cleaned up. This took some time. Uh, I used this wire brush a lot, and then just a carburetor cleaner and the mean green. But it helps also if you soak these overnight. You could soak them in diesel fuel or something to break that down, mineral spirits. Just make sure all your O-rings are out. That way they don't uh, get damaged. But this is done. Now I'm gonna go through and clean up some of these smaller parts like the choke, jets. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, so this actually, the main jet actually unscrews from this emulsion tube here. So we're gonna unscrew that and then I'll go through how to clean the jets because there's some, some tips and tricks there. And then I'll probably just cut out the rest of the cleaning the parts and go to assembly. All right, so I'm gonna start with reassembly. I always start with the bowl first. So I did end up having to go get a new float needle and seat because I dropped the old float needle and I, I couldn't find it. So there's a Suzuki dealer. I drove over there, I got one. So here's the new seat. It's got an O-ring on there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on here and then I'll slide this down in there like that. Should just push down in there. Okay. Then there's a retainer. You can see right there. It's just a little bit little bitty guy. The retainer goes right like then the baffle goes on. I'm gonna put it in there kind of loose for right now. Because I have to 
slip our pilot jet down in there, which I'll put in there next. And these look very, very clean, guys. So I, I spent some time. I have a little wire wheel buffer. I cleaned them all up. You can get a carburetor rebuild kit that has all new jets. Just due to time constraints, I didn't do that. So things are shipping slow right now with the COVID. So we're just fixing the old stuff. I need a finer screwdriver. Okay, so the pilot jet's going in there. It's tight. Now I'll tighten this plate up. Okay, that's in there tight now. So I talked about this tube and the main jet being removable. So I did remove this in the vise. I cleaned them all up. I put a new O-ring from my personal stock here on it. So I'm going to oil this O-ring up and slide it, slide this down in there now. Okay. Okay, that's tight. Next, we'll put the float in. So, and the float needle, the float is oriented like this. Goes up and down. So we'll put the put the needle on. Drop the float in, and we'll put the float pin through. See, this is kind of scored up on one side, so that'll be the side that doesn't slide through so we don't pull a gall. Okay, that's in. So I was trying to, so when you don't have fuel in the carburetor, the float goes down. And as fuel fills the bowl up, the float goes up. We should be done in here. So I can put the bowl gasket on. There, just like that. We'll put the bowl on. Get your overflow tube in past where it needs to be. Put the bowl on, make sure the gasket's not pinched or anything. We'll put our four bowl screws in. Tighten in a cross pattern, that way you don't pinch down on one side too much. Okay, jump over to this one, tighten it down. Tighten this one down. Same thing here. These don't have to be super tight. All right, now I'm going to put the primer plunger in, and this. You want to look on this and look for cracks or tears or anything. I don't see any, but if I had more time, they, did, they didn't have this in stock at the Suzuki dealer, although, otherwise I would have replaced it. But we're going to hope for the best. Same like with an accelerator pump on an old carburetor. 
it's always good to replace it. I just didn't want to wait to have one chipped in. I wanted to try and get this put back together. So I remember this weep hole was oriented up, which seemed odd to me, but oh, I want to put a little bit of grease or oil around this. So let me get some. I'm going to oil this up a little bit. That way I have a good, the engine will, this won't hurt the fuel or anything. So orient that up. Okay, now we'll put our adjustment screws in. I want to make sure I'm calling these what they are. So let me look at my drawing again. Okay. This one would be item number 30, which is the pilot screw. This was the one that was two and seven eighths of a turn in. I believe it was right here. So. We'll thread it all the way in and then back it out two and seven eighths. Oh, come on. It's acting a little like it wanted to start crooked. There we go. Be careful not to strip stuff out on here. Alright, we're all the way tight, so we'll go. A half, one, a half, two, and then not, so two and a half, not quite three. So that's our two and seven eighths. Then I'll put in the other adjustment screw. I'm calling this item 10 on the drawing. Just a screw. So this was what was about a turn and a half out. I'll thread this one in. Come out. A half, one, and a half. Okay. Now I'll put in the choke plunger. I did do some work lubricating this up and cleaning it that way it moves nice and just the way it should. And remember that half moon only fits in there one way. So we'll slide it in there like that. Start threading it down. Tighten it up with our pliers. So we're done here. I am going to show you guys real quick. I cleaned up the slide and the slide needle on the bike. Then we'll put this back together and we'll be done. All right, so as you can see, here's our slide. I cleaned this needle up. Also cleaned up the other choke plunger, which is from the cable up here on the handlebars. Oh, actually right here. Everything seems to be working. So I'm going to put this into this hole. And remember, to do that, this plunger has to be pulled out like that. Put that in there and put the boots on. We'll be done. All right, everything's put back together here. I just have to slide it back down in between the two boots, but we are done. We're ready to go see if this works. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If it helped you out, please give a thumbs up. Also, check out our other videos. I do weekly vlogs on things we're buying and reselling, so be sure to check those out and click subscribe. 